record button in my thingy. There it is. There. Um, hello and welcome. My name is Livia Cohn. I'm the executive editor of Three Times Press. And we have a new project that is coming out um, in early January. It is the first of a three volume series on questions of time in Taoism. And the series was sponsored and inspired by International Dallas Conference on the topic of time. And that was held in June of 2019 in Los Angeles. And so the first volume of this three volume series is coming out. It is called Tao and Time Classical Philosophy. And we're very happy today to have our speaker here, um, who is one of our contributors. And this is um, Dr. Shuvan Wang. Hello, welcome. Hello, Livia. Thank you very much to uh, have me here. I'm very pleased to be here. Excellent. And so, um, Professor Wang, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, what is your background? What was your training? And how did you get interested in Taoist philosophy? OK, gladly. Um, Hello, everyone. I'm Shu Wen Wang. I'm originally uh, from Sichuan uh, in China. And I was uh, working in a university before I started my PhD. But uh, during that time, I was not very happy. And I started to uh, look around people around, uh, around me. I felt the, they were not very, uh, I mean, most of them were uh, under big stress. That's the point I started to wonder uh, what is the problem and then I found like uh, uh, maybe I should uh, study philosophy to to solve this or uh, give me an answer of these problems that's why I I started look uh, looking at Taoism and I found uh, Zhuangzi this uh, philosopher which I love the most and, and then I decided to, to go to Thailand and to start my PhD and doing doing my research on Zhuangzi's philosophy. That's excellent, good. And you graduated um, just recently, and then now you live in the United States. Is that right? Yes, yes. I uh, graduated in the uh, um, beginning of this year, and uh, after I graduated, I I moved uh, here in upstate New York, and um, I'm currently working as a freelancer scanner uh, so that's um, that's about my not life right now oh that's very good okay excellent um so can you tell us a little bit about um what exactly in in the Zhuangzi, what as aspect of Zhuangzi you find the most fascinating uh um i start i studied the question uh in um uh, in my research, which is uh, what is the true rea uh, reality according to Zhuangzi, and my, uh, my, my topic of uh, dissertation is understanding Zhuangzi's oneness through the concept of Xu, and because according to Zhuangzi, the true reality is the oneness. It's not just a, a limited perspective uh, of, uh, of things. Oh, that's that's fascinating. So, so the sense of of oneness is like um, it's not identity, but it's like a, a unity. Or um, so, how would you describe this oneness? Uh, it's kind of a sense of unity. A, uh, in the philosophy of Zhuangzi, it talks about uh, basically it is uh, talking about uh, uh, how the um, the material aspect and the non-material aspects are collected as one. And so um, for common people, we only take a limited perspective, which we can see, we can touch, we can acquire as real. But uh, Zhuangzi was talking about the ultimate reality, which is the reality according to Tao, which is um, uh, Tao is the um, metaphysical principle of all all uh, existence, and that's the, uh, the that's the concept of oneness come from. And then, and then this particular oneness is also it's not just a theoretical concept, but it has an impact on your actual life. So, so when you in your in the presentation in our book, 
<coughs> excuse me, your, your main um, focus is on the self. And so you distinguish different levels of self. And so the self and time have a certain relationship to this oneness. Yes, sure. Uh, because I found that like, um, why people, uh, like common people cannot see the, the bigger picture of oneness, it's mainly because we have this um, belief of self. We believe that we have a self, and which, which is a, a limited and um, static uh, point of view, which will um, br um, block us to see the uh, ultimate reality, which is the oneness. So that's my major focus uh, in my dissertation to, dis uh, to examine the concept of self. And uh, through examining uh, the concept of self, we can understand the uh, ultimate, uh, ultimate picture of uh, oneness. Very good. And then within the oneness also, there are different levels of time. And so you're distinguishing like a more cosmic level and a more concrete level of time. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, sure. Um, yes, um, according to John's philosophy, there uh, he talks about different um, uh, dimensions of time, which uh, like uh, he talks about Zhou. Uh, it's a... Uh, um, uh, it's a uh, it's a time concept. It, we we can call it like a space time, and mm -hmm. he and uh, he was also talking about seasonal time. But uh, his major concern still uh, more related to self, which is um, um, it's related to the physical world. Is that uh, time always relative? And this time time concept actually is kind of. Uh, um, how to say aware uh, it's uh, people's awareness of time so uh, through through discussing the different layers of selves and we can you know uh, the different uh, concept of time right and and so so the the idea is that people need to understand that time is, is very much like a construction like a construct of the self so it's it's something that sort of flows and you're experiencing it, but it's also extremely subjective. Yes, yes, it is. Um, um, in John's, there's a story in, in John's philosophy, which is uh, the story of seed and forget. In this story, he, he talks about uh, uh, different layers of uh, self. Uh, like uh, I summarized the, the different layers, like uh, the physical self, the cognitive self. The physical self is uh, kind of easy to understand because we always we have this physical body. We always identify ourselves as our physical body, uh, and the con con cognitive self is actually the uh, we are and um, we identify ourselves as our thoughts, our, um, as our knowledge is, but this is not real. The problem is as long as we identify our uh, self as our physical body, the physical self, and then we have awareness of um, life and death because everybody is going to die. So we have this and we tend to use our um, uh, lifespan to measure, uh, measure time. But this, uh, but then the problem is, the time concept cannot be uh, absolutely real because, uh, you know, um, between different uh, species, the lifespan uh, are always different. So how can you get an absolute uh, time concept? So this is one point John to talk about, and then an another one is the con cognitive self. Uh, again, uh, because we have our um, we have our thoughts, we have uh, our way of defining things, but we only have confined, uh, I, I mean, we only have limited pers perspective. Uh, so actually people are confined by our own limited perspective uh, to look at things, to, uh, to look at uh, time. So we use this cognitive self to shape the time view, uh, which uh, a simple, uh, uh, a simple example is we make distinctions, uh, like we make distinctions among past, present, and future, uh, which is actually relative to space. 
as we all know that uh, the Chinese time is different from uh, American time. <laughs> but, uh, right now it's like November 13th, um, but in China it's already uh, November 14th. So how come uh, time can be absolute? So in that sense, time is not absolutely real as well. Uh, the other layer John to talk about, I mean, the self, uh, the other, the third layer John to talk about is the behavior self. And behavior self is actually when people identify um, our emotions, our be behaviors as our self, as real. And this kind of um, self actually enhance the feeling um, of losing time or the feeling of losing things which cause a lot of uh, stress, anxieties and you know sufferings for people. So these okay. are the uh, different layers of uh, selves and which also constructed the different concept of time. Yeah, okay, that's all very fascinating. And it all gets resolved into some kind of a more universal self that is more fluid and that connects to the universe which of course is one of the key aspects of Taoism is to relate the heavenly dimensions and the cosmic dimensions in a very practical way into your own life. And so the article in the book talks more about um, the details of those different levels of self and how time um, plays out in the Zhuangzi in relation to those levels of self, and then also gives a resolution of this. So we're very happy that you have the ability to contribute to this uh, work. And we recommend everybody come to our website, which is threetimesquest.com and check out the book. Um, there's a lot of detailed information on the website and you can also order it. So again, this is Tao and Time Classical Philosophy and you'll find it on threetimespress.com. And thank you again, Professor Wang for this lovely interview. Thank you, it's my pleasure to be here.